ribbons, breezy fabrics, intricate techniques and a whole lot of style. All made in India. That's what we are talking about. I'll get the look. Welcome to a brand new episode where we redefine style for you. And to do that this week, we have handpicked a handcrafted elegant fabric that screams geometry. We are talking about Kota. This geometric weave originated in Mysore. It was in the late 17th century that a general of the Mughal army brought the weavers from Mysore to Rajasthan. Kota Doria gets its name from Kota, a place in Rajasthan where the fabric is now manufactured. Time now to meet our subject of the week, Kajal, a young college going girl who's trying to find her step in the world of fashion. Hi, my name is Kajal Baba. I'm 20 years old. My hobbies, uh, I love sketching, I love theatre, which is probably why I'm so dramatic and I'm a Bharatanatyam dancer. I just got out of school and I've entered first year of college. My problem is that I've been in a boarding school all my life, so I've never really had a chance to build my wardrobe. All I have is neatly hung uniforms and basic jeans and basic t-shirts. My aim uh, I've come back home after a very long time and it's just in time for my parents' 25th anniversary. There are a lot of parties lined up and I really want to wear something that will make them happy and they really like it when I wear Indian clothes. I want to wear something which is presentable but at the same time is memorable and stylish. So team get the look, please help me make my parents' 25th anniversary a memorable event. Kajal, that's the sweetest request we've got on the show so far. Don't worry, we have it covered and to help you look the part, we have on board designer Urvishi Kaur. Let's go and meet her. Hi Urvishi, what's the most overrated outfit? I think it would have to be the bodygown dress. What's the most underrated garment? The simple shirt. What's your favourite silhouette? My peplum blouse. Urvishi Kaur, thank you so much for being on Get The Look. Thank you, thank you for having me here. How many years have you been designing for? Oh my gosh, <laughs> I sound really old now. Um, I launched the label in 2008 and ever since it's been a new journey every six months. And what do you reckon is a USP of brand Urvishi Kaur? Oh, it's tough to fit it all in into one word, but I would say um, separates, comfort, India, modern. Fashion. So in your current collection, you've used a lot of Kota. Why did you decide to work with the fabric? My travel to Jaipur led me to uh, explore a lot of Rajasthani uh, fabrics. And I do like the juxtaposition of this really sheer, effortless, soft, uh, almost ethereal quality of Kota against a lot of khadis and more sort of... Um, uh, heavier uh, fabrics that, that are really opaque. I, I enjoy this duality that comes along. Wonderful. Now we've come to you so that you can curate a wardrobe for our subject of the week. She wants to go home and surprise her on her parents' 25th anniversary. She's Indeed. an attractive girl. She's 5'10". Yes. Oh, uh, she has really long hair. Uh, we've sent across some images to yes. you as well, as well as her measurements so you can sit back, relax yes. and uh, curate the perfect looks for her. Oh, thank you. I will, I'd be happy to do that. And I can't wait to see what you come up with. I really do hope she likes it. The idea is really for her to not feel that it isn't something that she can incorporate in her wardrobe. It, it should be something that she can look towards um, as, as, as having more in her wardrobe. I wanted to show how in all the three ensembles, how the separates work beautifully in Kota and for somebody um, young and this modern Indian woman. The silhouette that she would be surprising her parents with would be um, like a crop top, like a sheer layer of Kota with sort of pleated sheer palazzo pants. It's quite cinched and you know at the waist and is sort of it's like a column a uh, pleated ruched uh, dress but in a beautiful zari checks um, in Kota. Again, very lightweight, again something quite elegant and I think styled very casually just lends itself more. I feel 
no show that talks about India-inspired uh, handlooms is complete without the sari in it. Styling the sari with a palazzo, half pleated, you know, with a peplum top, um, and having a range of colors and techniques, just, it's a lot of fun and youthful. I do hope that, you know, she loves uh, what she gets. I'm sure Kajal would love Urvashi Kaur's school and contemporary designs. Up next, our subject meets our beauty host, Dr. Kiran Noya, to complete her Get the Look experience. Beauty is about starting young so you can look gorgeous for the ages. Stay beautiful, everyone. So, you're here in my clinic. What can I do for you? What's bothering you? My main concern is the white hairs and black hairs. So, I've had them for about two, three years now. Okay, and how about the makeup that you use? Maybe just a little bit of foundation and stuff, not a lot. Do you mind if I take a look at your skin? Yeah, no problem. Great. Okay, got it. I saw a bunch of black heads all on your nose. And I also saw something called milia all over your face using different different products clogs up the sweat glands and actually makes them all obstructed and forms those little white bumps. Now the blackheads is separate. Now blackheads tend to be the beginning of acne. Blackheads can turn into whiteheads and whiteheads can turn into pimples and pimples can turn into marks and scars when they heal. So let's talk a little bit about how to prevent it and how to treat it in a simple easy way for a young 21 year old girl. Step one, let's check out your skincare products. I know it's really fun to go to the store and pick up like all these beautiful things that look amazing, but the fact is is that you're very often doing your skin a disservice. Okay? okay. So keep it clean, keep it simple, and use the same skincare for three to six months. Second thing is makeup. A girl like you with skin like you does not need foundation. Okay? Okay. Foundations tend to be thick and tend to obstruct your pores. Step three, Wash your face at night. <laughs> I know that sounds like obvious, but I can tell you nobody does it. All right. All right? Yeah. Let's talk about what we're going to do today. First, we're going to work on removing your milia, and then we're going to also remove your blackheads. So shall we get started? Yes, let's go. Let's go. So the process is actually pretty simple for young Gajal. First, we cleanse the skin to get rid of any junk that may be on it from just daily wear and tear. Then we steamed the skin, so that helps us open up the pores. And we started to extract out all of the junk. So we got rid of all of that junk in our sweat glands and all of that junk in the follicle. After that, we cleansed the skin again and moved forward onto Neo. So Neo is an amazing laser. It's the only laser that can treat acne. It literally will zap the skin very gently, kill the acne bacteria, reduce the amount of oil your skin is secreting, brighten you up, close your pores, and help you with marks. So it's an all-in-one. Hi. Hi. How do you feel? I feel good. I feel fresh. Wonderful. You look fabulous. Oh, wow. When Dr. Lohia showed me the mirror and I saw myself after the treatment, I, my skin was completely clear, the blackheads were gone, the whiteheads were gone. In a few days when you're ready to go for your parents' anniversary, you're going to feel amazing. Okay, that's amazing. Yeah, and your pores will be tight and you'll look glowy and fresh and clean and everyone's going to say, hey, who's that girl? <laughs> <laughs> We all go through a point in our lives when we want to clean up well for our parents. Kajal is doing a great job at that post her skin treatment. She is looking absolutely radiant. Well, the road of surprises doesn't quite end there. I've asked Kajal to show up in a white shirt and I've lined up something very special just for her. There she is. How are you? Hi, I'm great. Your skin is looking beautiful. Thank you. So, any idea why I asked you to show up in a white shirt? No, I have no idea. I have organized a crash course just for you with two sisters who are extremely talented and they own a brand called Outhouse. And it's cool, eclectic, edgy and young, just like you. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm really excited about this. Wonderful. Off you go. Hi. 
so Ambika tells me you love jewelry. Yeah, I really do. I just never had an opportunity to experiment a lot with it. But you're at the right place now. I think we're going to help you style your jewelry wardrobe better. First up, we need to know what's trending. So these midi flutter rings, something you could try. So you could actually mix a pair of two, yeah. or you could just wear one. They are like butterflies floating on your fingers and add drama to your uh, look. And the second, I think, uh, which I would say what is trending is this palm ring. It covers the entire palm. And also the colors are very nice. They're subdued, comfortable to use throughout the day. I mean, something which is statementy and elegant. So what's the right amount of jewelry I should wear? Nothing is ever too much or too less, depending on the occasion you're going for. But I wouldn't suggest wearing a heavy necklace with a heavy pair of earrings. It's just like overloading yourself with jewelry. Also, something which I'm wearing and I would like you to try as well. During the day, it's clean and smart and at night you could have these tassels coming in the front yeah. like this. Someday you might be feeling very colorful and yeah. you would like to wear a colorful pair of earrings or maybe something bold like this which is a ear cuff. It's a fun uh, summer holiday accessory which is very easy to wear. Again like this, the pair piece itself is more than enough. Yeah. Like that's the right amount of jewelry basically. This has been really helpful. Thank you so much. I think more than me, my mother would be really happy that I'm learning a thing or two about jewelry. So Thank, you. Thank you. I think that jewelry course is really interesting and eclectic. Time for a break, but before that, a quick DIY. Here are three cool DIY ideas curated by accessory blogger Alex. The metallic bracelet. Group four to five safety pins together. Put two pins on either side of the group to hold them together. According to your wrist, repeat step 2 and keep joining one group to the other. There you go, a brand new bracelet with a lot of spunk. The earrings with a twist. Buy a colored flat wire and a earring stopper from any stationery shop. Roll up the wire. Glue the stopper to the rolled up wire. There you go, your new self-made earrings. The flower clip. Cut three strips of paper. Glue them together and start twisting it from one side. Keep twisting them until they form the petals of a rose. There you go. You've got your very own flower clip. Coming up after the break, a pampering session for Kajal.